in a year where it felt like things have been never-ending, just a constant cycle of what day is it, and when does this start, and when does this start, oh wait, it's cancelled, that's right. The one thing we all clung on to for hope, the NFL season, what we all thought I think would be the light at the end of the tunnel, well, that's not the case, but it is another kind of sort of normal for society as we continue to fight through this COVID-19 pandemic. Nick and Connor here to the house, our football pick em show. Jack O'Brien will be involved a little bit later. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it right now due to a uh, prior commitment, but as you can tell, things are a little bit different. Going to have a few different makeshift sets this semester, or this year, this season. Obviously, we are college students. We go to college together. So if at any point we do get sent home, um, you're going to see Skype versions of this show. But we are committed, and we will be doing health and everything permitting all 16 or 17 weeks of the regular season. Maybe even some playoff exclusive shows as well. But Connor, great to be back. Great to have you by my side once again, picking some NFL Absolutely. games. Absolutely. Excited to be here. NFL Week 1. It's going to be a season like no other. You're right. We're here for it. Perhaps the most intriguing NFL season. I think that might be like an overused term. It's the most intriguing NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, because you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. You don't know when COVID could ramp up. Oh, that was a bad way to word that. You don't know when COVID could impact a player or a coach, uh, you know, important, you know, maybe even shut down a whole team depending on how mm -hmm. it spreads. You know, you never know. Uh, what's going to happen injury-wise, talent-wise, a lot of very interesting draft class. We got so many interesting Very. receivers. We got running backs like uh, Taylor, Jonathan Taylor, mm -hmm. at, uh, the Colts, one of my big players to watch this season. Justin Jefferson sliding right into the WR2 spot in the Vikings team. Um, the Vikings team, that sounds like I just read a book on football well, teams. The, the, the Washington the, football the team. The Washington thing. football team is a thing. And that's though. another element to 2020. It is. So. The, the new normal continues exactly. on. Exactly, new normal. But as you know, you're here to get picks. We have some gambling at the end, too. Um, me and Connor, I think each two gambling picks to watch. Two gambling picks. Two two gambling picks to keep an eye on. Fantasy player of the week. All that stuff at the end of the episode. And as we said, Jack O'Brien will be chiming in as well. But without any further ado, do, you ready to uh, you ready to get picking? I'm ready to get right into it. All right, eight twenty Thursday. If you remember last year, it took like seven weeks for us to get a Thursday night game right. We had to drink hot sauce. It was a whole fiasco. This year, we're hoping for different luck, Connor. You're wearing the jersey. I'm the wearing Chiefs the jersey today. And the Texans. Texans at the Chiefs. 8-20, Thursday night football. I'm going with the Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champions. Connor, who are you taking? Defending this Super Bowl champions at home against the Texans team that lost the key piece, Deshaun Watson. Well, they have him. Excuse Hopkins. Me. Hopkins. Today we DeAndre are Hopkins, recording this me. on Tuesday We're, night. Today Deshaun Watson just signed. Deshaun Watson yesterday, just signed yesterday, yesterday or two days ago. He signed that contract. big extension. He's in our minds. Hopkins. Connor Hopkins. Knew that. My apologies for that. DeAndre Hopkins going to the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, really huge loss for that team. Absolutely, absolutely. But with that being said, I think the Super Bowl hangover. Reigns. I just wrote Chiefs down. Do I have to wild. cross it off? He he wrote the Chiefs down before I even stated it. I'm going with the Texans okay, in this game. Okay, okay. I like it. I think it. it's a little bit of a wild card. Uh, it's going to be an unpredictable season, and I think there's going to be a lot of unpredictable picks. But I do. I'm going to try to go with that. I do as well. I have a couple maybe more aggressive picks. Came exactly. in last last year. I think I was only like three games behind you when it was all said and done, but we need to yeah. be aggressive. We can't exactly. play it safe this year. It's exactly. a fun season. Let's have some fun. Let's do it. Um, Sunday, first game on the 1 o'clock slate, Eagles at the Washington football team. Um, this... I might not pick the football team all season just because of how, you know, Oh, I understand the circumstances of, you know, everything going on. This was the definitely, it should have happened a while ago, but this was definitely the right time to change the name. Um, if any, if they were going to do it right now is the perfect time. So I mm. completely agree with the name change, but, and I respect them taking the time to do something and pick a right name that fits. Um, but Washington football team, I have a hard time saying I'm going to support the Washington football team too. right now. I, I'm I going with, people are, I'm going with the Eagles right now. You go with the Eagles. I'm going to go with the Eagles as well. Uh, I just think the assets right now for the football team really aren't that great. Um, I think the Eagles kind of get a week one win right off the bat. I do as well. I love Boston Scott, one of their many running backs on I that team. I ended up picking him up on my fantasy I team. I picked him it? late in my home exactly. league, and I Elite love pick. Boston Scott. I can't wait. I hope he does so well. I hope he does well too. Dolphins at Patriots. Ryan Fitzpatrick just named the starter. That might have even been... I think that was yesterday. Uh, again, we are recording this on Tuesday. Put a graphic in when we edit this. Tuesday, we'll that do. We are recording this on Tuesday night. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick named the starter. Patriots, Cam Newton the starter. And, you know, this might be one of the most 
interesting seasons for the Patriots in a while. What can Belichick do? He's lost a lot of defensive players. Yes, He's yeah. got a lot of new faces on the offense, a lot of mix mashing. Still that kind of odd running back committee still. Exactly. But I'm going to roll with the Patriots here. I'm going to say the Dolphins, I like what they did this offseason. But mm-hmm. I think I still am going to give it to Bill Belichick and the Patriots. And I think Cam Newton definitely has a point to prove. And regardless of who's on that field with him, the other 10 guys, I think he's going to come out in week one and say everyone else made a mistake. In the words of many this season, I think you're really going to see the Patriots utilize uh, Cam Newton in different situations that they never got to use Brady in before. And, and with that being said, I think you're going to get a, a lot more dynamic offense, let's put it that way. I agree. It's going to be an interesting team. I don't think that we're ready to back away from the Patriots just yet at the top of that division. I'm going with the Patriots in this game. Good pick. So, so far, one differing pick through three. Packers and Vikings. Oh, man. This, this was a tough this one This one pick. right here. So many storylines with I these I think it's going to be the divider between all We got Diggs to us, Buffalo. But... We got the addition of Justin Jefferson. Kirk Cousins recently making the news um, for saying he, he's willing to die to play football. Yeah. That's a dude you want on your team, though. The guy absolutely, that cares that much, in my opinion, anyway. Um, but, you know, he wears his mask, he said, so he's not like some idiot. Mm-hmm. Um, but... And then the Packers, Jordan Love coming in for Aaron Rodgers. They don't draft any receivers to help Rodgers, anybody really to help him out at all on the offense. Um, regardless, I'm going to go with the – oh, just kidding. I'm going to go with the Vikings. I, that would have been funnier if I said the Packers and change it to the Vikings. But, Absolutely. you know, we're going with the Vikings. I love that team, and I really hope that Dalvin Cook stays healthy, and I love Jefferson. I love Thielen. You mm-hmm. know, let's let's hope they make some, wa- make some waves this year. Mm-hmm. I th- I'm going to go with the Vikings in this game as well before we get into anything else. But I think the Vikings' key to this season is staying healthy, as you mentioned. Um, Dalvin Cook, I really want to see him stay healthy. Uh, the loss of Diggs I don't think is going to be too bad for that team as they have Thielen and now the addition of Jefferson. I think this team may improve, in fact. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Vikings in this game. Absolutely respect that pick. I thought that was going to be the differing one. Like, you need some picks to differentiate so you no, can get the standings no, change. There's only one so far. Colts at Jaguars. The Jaguars have lost everybody and their mother. Um, <laughs> trades releases anything this season. Most recently, Leonard Fournette. Obviously, some key defensive pieces as well leaving. Um, that leads me to go with the Colts. Phillip Rivers, great veteran arm back there. Um, I love Jacoby Brissett. Obviously, played a little banged up, tapered off last year. The mm-hmm. Colts as a whole did. But I love this team. I think they have some really good talent. I love the Pittman pick from USC, the wide yeah. receiver. I love the Jonathan Taylor pick. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, obviously, they need to grow into their roles a bit. But mm-hmm. I think there's going to be some immediate production out of those rookies on the offense. Some really great forces on their defense. And I'm going to go with the Colts in this one. Absolutely. I'm going to go with the Colts as well. I think they're going to be a very interesting team this year. We'll see what Phillip Rivers can really do in that offense as well. Um, hopefully connecting with somebody like T.Y. Hilton. And a couple of the other targets that they have where last year Brissett and Hoyer, I believe, didn't quite get there. But I think Phillip Rivers may not make an immediate, immediate impact on that team, um, but they win this game this week. Fair enough, fair enough. Bears at Lions, we just found out. Mitch Trubisky beats out Nick Foles as the starting QB in Chicago. Did they do that to make him go, oh boy, how safe is my job? I better play my ass off. Or was it genuinely he's playing better than Nick Foles? We don't know. We, we weren't there. We don't we don't know. Um, regardless of that one, though, I'm going to go with the Lions. I really like DeAndre Swift. Um, mm-hmm. I like Matt Stafford, obviously. They have Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay. I really like their offense, and I think their offense produces against a very sturdy Bears defense. I think they're mm-hmm. going to edge them out. I think this one's going to be a little low scoring, though. You think so? I, I can see it definitely be low, being low scoring, uh, but I'm going with the Bears in this game here. I think it's Mitchell Trubinsky's job to lose. And I think he actually makes a statement this week. Okay, I can see that. Definitely. All the talk on social media, obviously, very not pro Trubisky by any no, stretch not, of the imagination. not by any means. So if anyone's going to play big week one, it's going to be him. Raiders at Panthers is our next game. The Raiders, you know, mm-hmm. they're moving to Vegas. The Panthers had a lot of moves, obviously. Rivera left last season mm-hmm. towards the end there. But they do have, honestly, I think the best offensive player in football, McCaffrey. They have uh, Teddy Bridgewater returning now. And, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. I keep saying everything's interesting, but it is. All So many moves. There's a like whole co- quarterback roulette but... this offseason. A really good draft class. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Raiders adding rookie wide receivers to their team. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Raiders in this one. This one is perhaps 
the hardest decision to make, I think, out of all the Week 1 games. Um, I'm going to go with the Raiders as well in this game. I think from the Panthers this year, you're going to see a lot of, of Teddy Bridgewater dump-off passes to McCaffrey, and, and that's the key to that offense is McCaffrey, McCaffrey staying healthy. I agree. I agree. Henry well, Ruggs too. III is the rookie receiver. I keep getting yes. him and Jury mixed up. Or they Jury, also I added Robbie think. Anderson from Robbie from Anderson, the Jets, so, then Renfro's so there. That, that may help. Right. They got a lot of but, talent there. Uh, I'm going with the Raiders in okay. this game. Jets at Bills. Big division matchup there. This division could be free game. Um, something that hasn't happened in a while. The new quarterback crop is in in the division, mm-hmm. though. Um, a lot of young faces still in a new face in New England and Cam Newton there. Uh, you know, the Darnold-Josh Allen battle continues to rage on. Uh, in this one, though, I'm going to take the Bills. A lot of people are saying the Bills are going to flounder this year with the addition of Diggs and all that. It's not going to pan out. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't know if I can give a honest enough take, but I think they're going to beat out the Jets here in Week 1. I think the Bills are going to beat the Jets as well. I think Diggs is a very, very good addition to the offense there. I'm a really big fan of Josh Allen as well. And I think you're going to see a lot of connections with those two in the future. Absolutely. Browns at Ravens. Browns beat the Ravens both games last Mm -hmm. year, if memory serves me right, despite the Ravens seemingly beating up on everybody else in the entire league up until the playoffs started. Um, But, you know, a very, very big matchup here. A lot of big division games, um, giving everyone right in the thick of it, right from the beginning. Um, And because of the Browns adding guys like Austin Hooper, um, I think that their offense might be in better shape now than it was last year. They just inked Kareem Hunt to a deal as well. I believe two years, $13 million. So they've got a new face on the offense. Some older older faces are staying. Um, I shouldn't call him an older face. He was there one year and was suspended like half of last season. <laughs> um, the defense always improving. Uh, still very young core there as well in their defense. Very impressive. A lot of room to grow. Ravens had a really solid draft as well with guys like Dobbins. Um, I'm going to go with the Ravens, but I think it's going to be close. Don't think it's a blowout. Again, mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield's the big question mark with the Browns now, especially with Keenum behind him. He has to do something quick here. They've given him all he needs to win, especially drafting some linemen. I think it's put up or shut up time for Mayfield. I'm mm-hmm. not going to say he has a bad game this week, but I don't think he's going to outplay Lamar. The Browns are my team to watch this season. I think a lot of people doubted them coming into last season, and obviously their expectations um, didn't live up to anything, really. Um, but they're my team to watch this season. As you mentioned, Baker Mayfield is definitely the person that's going to control the rest of the offense. For the record, for the record, not to cut you off, I sure. love Baker Mayfield, loved him at OU, wanted him somehow to go to the Steelers, and you know they had Landry Jones. I don't know if he was there when they drafted ba- when they, Baker talked came in. I can't remember. But I, I know that they look at you know that kind of crop of quarterback yeah. – and uh, I was really hoping somehow Mayfield was going to come because I wanted to root for him so bad. And he's one of the only Browns, being a Steeler fan, that I'll openly root for. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so honestly, full disclosure, I love Baker Mayfield. I didn't want anything. I'm like a hater or anything there. Connor, Absolutely. go ahead. The addition of Austin Hooper to that team I think is only going to add to, you know, the offensive elements, what they can utilize in the red zone, uh, maybe help Mayfield out a little bit more. I'm going with the Ravens in this game, however. Um, the next meeting that these two have – Later on this season, maybe a little bit of a different story, though. Right. Seahawks and Falcons. Jack would call this a bird battle. Maybe when we visit him later, we'll hear him refer to this as a bird battle. The bird battle. The bird battle. First of the season. <laughs> Seahawks, Falcons. Big Seahawks guy I am. Falcons getting Todd Gurley. I'm going to ride or die with the Seahawks, though. They're always one of my favorite teams, not the Steelers, to watch. Uh, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. Gurley back in the state of Georgia will not help... The Falcons in week one, I think the Seahawks are going to take charge of that game. I like the way you taunted us there. You kind of uh, led us to I, believe I maybe Gurley resurgence a bit. I hinted the players that I, I want to watch this year. <laughs> 405 game will be the Chargers against Joe Burrow and the Bengals at Cincinnati on CBS 405. New faces there as well. Mm-hmm. Justin Herbert, not going to start though. Tyron Taylor's going to start if memory serves me correct. I've said that twice okay. already. Take a shot, start the drinking game. <laughs> um, obviously, Joe Burrow, new rookie sensation coming in. Can he turn things around right away? Probably not. Um, you can't, you know, polish a turd gold and pretend it's gold. Um, but I think the Bengals will show improvement this year. I don't think that starts week one. I love, I love the Chargers. Distinct Keenan Allen to a new extension. Um, a lot of fun players to watch on that team, and I'm hoping that they'll all live up to the hype in week one and prove me right picking them. 
Bengals' future lies in the hands of one man, and that is Joe Burrow. Um, he will have some great offensive targets in Tyler Boyd, A.J. Green, uh, John Ross the third, obviously, and then dump off passes as well to Mixon and people like that. So he, I think he has a pretty good offensive core. I don't think that has a factor in week one. I'm going to go with the Chargers in this game, visiting Cincinnati. All right, and that will move us on to the 425 slate. A lot of games, all 16. Oh, all 32 teams are playing, so 16 games. Cardinals at 49ers. Last year, you might have said this is a blowout. This year, it's going to be a little closer, I like to think. I'm going to rock with the 49ers here, but I think this is one of the games to watch this week. How do these new players fit in their new homes, Um, especially DeAndre Hopkins being the main guy there? Um, So that's going to be a huge game, both teams. Can the Cardinals make something happen this young into the career of Kyler Murray? Uh, What do the 49ers do coming off a Super Bowl loss? A lot of storylines there. I think it's going to be a great game, but again, I'm rolling with the 49ers here. I'm going with the 49ers at home. This is another one of those matchups that I think may change come their second meeting later on in the season. I'm going to be interesting to see what Hopkins and Murray can do. Buccaneers at Saints. I'll admit it, hardest game I had to pick this week. I mean, how can you doubt the Saints? Everyone's saying they're finally going to get to that Super Bowl. The Super Bowl that has eluded them. They've been so close the last few years. And they've always somehow found a way to not reach the pinnacle of football, the Super Bowl game. Super Bowl game? I've never really heard anyone call it the Super Super Bowl game. game. The Super Bowl game. (laughs) The Super Bowl. They've never, haven't gotten there. They've always been so close yet so far. And then we have the Buccaneers, perhaps the best footballer of all time. Tom Brady comes in. Gronk comes in. You already got Godwin, or uh, you already got Mike Evans. Then you get all these running backs now. You got Fournette. You got uh, Ronald Jones. I mean, you got McCoy. For me, I can't the, remember if they cut McCoy exactly. or not. They might have cut McCoy. Don't mm. quote me on that. I'm, I'm not my too mind sure is boggling with football to games today. Right after now, but... been a long day of the academia world, and now the football has kind of played second fiddle today, unfortunately. So a lot of names and storylines floating around. Can't make sure everything's correct. But fact of the matter is, Buccaneers have a ultimate team styled yeah. offense right now. Mm-hmm. Can they do anything with it? I think there's growing pain still. No, you know, no preseason games, anything like that. I'm going to say there's pains they have to grow through, and week one's going to be the Saints week. I like that pick. Live from the Dome. This is my game of the week. Let me say that ahead of time. Brady Breeze. I forgot we did game of the week, to be honest. We will finally get to see, realize exactly, if, if Belichick really controlled that offense in New England, we will get to see if Brady can survive with Arians in uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, I'm going with the Saints, Saints in the Dome. We've been very, very similar these last few picks here. In fact, it's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven picks in a row. Who that? All the same. Cowboys at Rams closes off Sunday night football. Kerry Underwood, take it away. Um so yeah, that's a big bet. I'm looking at the wrong one. Cowboys at Rams. Never mind. You know what I just did? I Call looked at I looked at the monitor and saw that stupid exactly. new we have logo that. for the Rams and said that's got to be a Chargers logo. But no, no it's the damn Rams that's logo. The Rams. It looks like a Chargers secondary logo. I'd be honored to work for either organization, but what's going on there? I cannot. What's that going out. on there? Cowboys at Rams and their new weird logo. Um, I'm gonna go with the Cowboys. I like the Cowboys this season. As I like the Cowboys in this game. Let's put it that way. I think it's a very uh, another bounce back year. At least they they really need to bounce back. Let's put it that way. New coach, obviously Jason Garrett goes to the Giants. I believe um, we're gonna see a lot more. I think offensive power. Jason Garrett leaving was so really long ago in the football and, off-season yeah. timeline, I almost forgot that it happened. Mm-hmm. I was like, did he leave? And they're like, oh, yeah, duh. He left. It was one of the big storylines. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and now it, this this game, this season, excuse me, lies in the hands of Dak Prescott. And Dak Prescott alone, I think it's this year to really prove himself. Uh, I'm going with the Cowboys, like I said. I like it. I like it. That brings us to Monday Night Football. Steelers at the Giants, a huge rivalry game for Monday Night Football's opener of the doubleheader. Steelers-Giants, Ben Roethlisberger's back. Everyone's saying, comeback player of the year, make some Super Bowl contenders. He's going to go and show these Mahomes and Lamar Jacksons of the world 
hey, the old cowboy, the old gunslinger is still here ready to rock and roll. No Brady in the way now. He's with the Buccaneers in the NFC. You know, what happens with old Ben Roethlisberger? Can he represent that old guard of the Manning, Roethlisberger, Brady trio running the AFC? The last one standing, what can he do? He can beat the Giants. I don't know how I feel about the other stuff, but he can help him beat the Giants. I love the Claypool draft pick. Um, a lot of good running backs now. I think the Steelers are going to have a committee. Eric and Ebron. Exactly, like the Eric that. Ebron edition. Um, I think the only place where the Steelers are lacking this season is in the running back facility if James Conner cannot stay healthy. Um, but week one, they're definitely going to beat the Giants, let's put it that way. Uh, I think they make a statement, um, beat them pretty big. Okay, I respect that. I respect that. Uh, Titans at Denver. Denver apparently was like in the 80s and then it snowed today or something like I, I that. I heard about that. I saw that um, actually on Twitter. So I don't know what that's so, going to do to anybody What playing. kind of weather will we see Titans on Monday night? made it to the AFC Championship game last year. Uh, I think they ride that momentum. Broncos, Drew Locke, a lot of new faces there as well. I think they're going to be a very talented team mm-hmm. now that they've surrounded him with the right weapons. But I think Derrick Henry gets the ball handed to him numerous times, much like in the playoffs, and he just helps, you know, the Titans win this game, especially with the newly signed Ryan Tant. Not even newly, that's month old news now. But Tannehill's back as well. I think he knows, okay, I've proven to everyone I still got it. I'm going to keep showing them that, that they made the right decision in signing this new deal with me. I think the Titans win in this one. No Vaughn Miller for this game. For the, and no for Vaughn Miller. That was news as today as well. News as today, season-ending ankle surgery, I believe. I think so. Ankle. Um, I'm going with the Titans in this game, and I think the defining factor is the defense and the defense alone. Uh, Derrick Henry, as you mentioned, will get the ball a lot more. And without Vaughn Miller, I just think the Titans ride that momentum, as you mentioned. Absolutely. And now we will send it down to our colleague, the defending to the house champion, Jack O'Brien. Jack, what do you got for us? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to To The House, or should I say, welcome back to my house, because I won. I'm still the ruler of this house. I'm the king of the house. You're probably wondering, Jack, that's a bucket hat. Why are you wearing it like that? How about you shut the fuck up, because this is my show now, and I do this remotely, from my own private domicile, bitch. So we're just going to get through it. We're just going to go through it. I'm probably going to be right on all of these, because I was right on every single one of them last year. So we're just going to continue on with that trend. Starting off on the Thursday night game, I'm taking the Chiefs because you got to be some, you have to have some form of brain trauma to not pick the Chiefs at this point. They're coming off a Super Bowl win. Patrick Mahomes might be half a quarter rich as Jeff Bezos. I'm not really sure about that. Nonetheless, that's going to be an easy Chiefs win. Not to say that I'm only saying that because I have a lot of money riding on the Chiefs, which I may or may not. That's undisclosed. Um, moving into Sunday's games, Cowboys, Rams. Really, I'm, I'm going to take Dallas. Just so I can, you know, I got I to gotta be wrong on at least one of these. So I'm just going to take Dallas to lose there. Seattle and Atlanta, another bird battle. Um, we're going to go with the Seahawks on this one. Just not really seeing it from Atlanta. I have no clue what the roster looks like. I just like the Seahawks a little better now. Um, Cleveland and Baltimore. I think Lamar Jackson's going to rip Cleveland to shreds. Um, fuck you, Cleveland. The Jets and the Bills, I'm taking the Bills. I think they're actually going to have a really good breakout year now that um, Uncle Tommy's down in Tampa on his retirement plan, hanging out with Gronk, probably going clubbing or not. I don't even know if there's any open. Um, Might go to it. Might go to, uh, where the fuck did Lou Williams go? I don't know. But wherever Lou Williams got those wings, they're probably hanging out there. Um, The Las Vegas Raiders, small timeout. That's hilarious because I still can't get over how they just ripped this team from Oakland, which is just, oh, fuck you. What's what's the owner's name? Is it Al Davis? Yeah, we're just going to roll with that. Al Davis, your stupid fucking haircut. Might not even be Al Davis. I think I'm getting that name wrong. Doesn't matter. I don't need to be right because I'm always fucking right. Um, I'm going to go with the – it's Raiders and the Panthers. I'm going to go with the Raiders – Actually, no. Fuck that. Scratch it. I'm going with the Panthers. Panthers are clearly a better team because I know sports. Um, Bears and Lions. Honestly, I saw a prop bet that said if Detroit would be under six wins this year. So, granted, I'm just taking it off of that. Don't think they're going to be that good. I don't know. I have absolutely no clue if Stafford's going to be healthy or not this year. 
He wasn't healthy last year. So, Bears. Bears! Um, Colts and Jaguars. The Colts are on the come up. The Colts had a good year last year. I mean, promising year, not good, but promising. Showed some signs of growth. The Jaguars have just progressively gotten worse since making it to the AFC Championship. I don't think I've ever seen a team fall harder than that after they really, like... Let's, get, let's try to win a Super Bowl, and then let's do everything we possibly can to never make it back to a Super Bowl again, or even a conference championship. So, we're going with the Colts. Packers and Vikings, I'm never picking the Packers again, um, because they made me do unspeakable things to my digestive system last year. So, we're going to go with the Vikings. <laughs> the, the Eagles and the Washington football team. Just the Washington football team. That's still hilarious. Um, I'm going to go with the Eagles. Go Birds. I still hate Philly, though. Uh, the Dolphins and the Patriots. I feel like I have to pick the Patriots just because if I don't, they're going to make me eat my shit. Um, but like I said, Uncle Tommy's in his friggin' retirement home down in Tampa. Might be a new look, but Belichick's still there, and I'm pretty sure, I can't remember his name, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the guy from Auburn is going to be the starter. Because I heard Cam Newton is not he's not primed to be the starter. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'd like to see Cam play. See if he can actually have a healthy season. Doubt it, but it would be nice to see. Chargers and the Bengals. Will Joe Burrow have a successful week one? That's really the question that I'm asking myself on this one. Um, I don't know. The Chargers lost Phil Rivers. I don't really know who they have a quarterback. I really haven't. You can tell I've done my fucking research. I don't know what the Chargers are going to look like. I've seen Joe Burrow play in college, not at the NFL. I have no idea how he's looked in training camp. So this is a toss-up. I'm actually going to flip a pen because I don't have a coin. Because um, I'm a big baller. I don't carry pocket change. My pocket change is ones and twos. Anyways, yeah, I have $2 bills. Um, not a big deal. I'm going to flip a pen. Okay, if this is on my left, not yours, mine, then I'm going to pick the Chargers. If it's on the right, I'm going to pick the Bengals. Damn it. Bengals. Um, what's next? The Buccaneers and the Saints. The Saints are going to kick the shit out of the Buccaneers. I, you're, you, no. Cardinals and 49ers. 49ers, that's an easy pick. Though, I will ex expect Kyler Murray to have a decent game because he's probably, I mean, he's the saving grace of that team. Then we got a Monday night double header. Steelers, Giants, we already know. We already know what's going to happen there. I'm not going to, I don't want to hype up the Steelers as much as I'm going to on the, every, on every episode of Stranded, every episode of My House. Um, is it's Steelers. Steelers are just going to run through New York. Um, the defense is going to be so good. Ben's back. And I know, like, oh, Jack, why are you looking for a 38-year-old quarterback coming off of elbow surgery to manufacture your happiness as far as the NFL goes this year? Look, okay? Penguins' Josh Scott bounced in embarrassing fashion. I'm clinging on for dear life to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going full black and gold running through my veins. I actually piss gold. It's actually way more vibrant than your piss. So sometimes it's even black. I don't know. I haven't talked to my doctor about it. The thing is, this is going to be a Steelers win. Kicking off Monday night. It's going to be fantastic. Throw all your fucking money on the Steelers. I know I will. Then Tennessee and Denver. I'm taking the Titans. I don't really have an explanation. I'm just taking the Titans. That's it for the first episode of To The House, actually To Jack's House. And hopefully someone challenges me this year. I don't know. I mean, really, it was rough. It was rough to just be so continually right last year. I can't, I can't keep this up. I need some competition. I need someone to even like chase me, you know, make it close. Something like this for fuck's sake. But until next time. And of course, always entertaining. Jack O'Brien making his picks. Will exactly. he beat us Defending again? Champ. Will he? We still Jack owe him wings. We still owe him wings.
because we've been on this hiatus from the pandemic. Absolutely. Um, so that was supposed to be a whole vlog thing. Exactly. Where me and Connor go buy him as many wings as he wants within exactly. reason. Stay, stay tuned for future content. Yeah, stay tuned that. for that, future that content. Be, that will be in the soon, near future. So we've got some gambling picks now. This is DraftKings again as of Tuesday Draft night. DraftKings. This is what we're presented with. We got the Browns plus eight versus the Ravens. We're taking that a million times over. Beat them both times last year. I think this week's game is going to be close. Even if the Browns do lose, they definitely cover that plus eight spread there. I actually like that as well. I'm going to go with that one. Um, like I like I mentioned, uh, Baker Mayfield is really going to control that team this year and, and see where... He's going to be their ceiling, let's put it that way. Absolutely. I think the team's success obviously lies on his shoulders. It's exactly. pretty obvious with him being the quarterback. His success. Sometimes the talent around a quarterback can help mm-hmm. them out a bit, but I think Baker really needs to make mm-hmm. sure he gets everybody the ball. Absolutely. Second one, Houston, Kansas City, over under 54 and a half. We're pounding the over. It mm-hmm. would have been louder if it wasn't 11 o'clock at night, but we are pounding the over. 51 31 last game. 82 points. 82 points in the last game. 54 and a half this game. Week one, everybody is excited, ready to come out. Again, training camps didn't really happen. We got the preseason, didn't happen. Mm -hmm. These teams are going to come out firing on offense. Defense is going to be tripping over each other. Huge game here. I'm pounding that over a 54 and a half. We're going to start this season with a bang. Bang. I think it's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going with them. I can. I, I, I respect it. I, know, I, respect it. I keep saying I respect it. That brings us to our game of the week. Connor, you gave us yours, but say it again for those Buccaneers who... versus the Saints. Saints are taking it in the dome. Who dat? I'm saying Texans Chiefs. Opening game of the Very season. Very respectable opening game. Playoff rematch. Two of the Exciting best quarterbacks in the world. Playoff game Just from last inked season. new deals. Going head to head. What team made the better choice? Obviously, even if this game's won by the Texans, it's still Watson until he can get them a Super Bowl. Or it's still Mahomes until Watson can get the Texans a Super Bowl. A lot of storylines. That's the the whole thing. I keep Mm -hmm. saying storylines. Take a shot every time I say that. Mm -hmm. But it's so true. A lot of them going into this game, and I think that's what makes it my game of the week. Connor, fantasy player of the week for you. Fantasy player of the week, I think, is going to be Christian McCaffrey, surprisingly. Um Way to play it safe. Way to play it safe, right? How, number one fantasy overall pick um, on ESPN and every other fantasy league I've seen. <laughs> um, but I think Teddy Bridgewater, as I mentioned, is just going to throw a lot of dump off passes this season to McCaffrey, and he's going to get a lot of touchdowns. And I think that ultimately gets him a lot of fantasy points. All right, I'm going to go, and now you're all you're all you're all going to judge. But here we go, Cam Newton. Quarterbacks, obviously, in fantasy, depending on how you play, but. Normally half PPR, let's say. Uh, quarterbacks aren't as valuable as running backs, wide receivers. But Cam Newton, mobile quarterback, likes exactly. to throw his weight around, likes to pick up those rushing yards, likes to get in the end zone rushing. Again, chip on his shoulder, huge chip on his shoulder. More Very than you get a lay, more than you get in a lay's bag. He probably has that many chips on his shoulder. I think he comes out with a vengeance, and I think he absolutely annihilates the Dolphins. Get this ready for when the Dolphins pull off the win. But I think Cam Newton comes up with a lot to prove. That makes him my fantasy player of the week. Pretty good pick there. I respect that. Again, all the respect for Connor I have, apparently. This has been To the House. We'll probably be in a completely new set by next week. But for Jack and Connor, I am Nick. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned to Stranded Sports YouTube channel and our website, StrandedSports.com, all season long for more NFL content. Thank you very much for checking us out. Stay safe. And enjoy the week one, uh, the week one, enjoy week one of NFL action. We'll see you next week.